Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. The fullness of Godhead bodily dwelleth in my soul, and we are complete in him. There is nothing more that I can do because Jesus paid it all. What a way to start our sermon this morning, dear brothers and sisters. I would request you to turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 4 till 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 4 till 8. We will read alternatively. That the righteous requirement of law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of flesh. Those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. <coughs> Verse 8, and then those who are in flesh cannot please God. Let us look to Lord in prayer. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we bow down and come to your presence. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us as living stones that we could come to your presence, Master, to bring our heart-filled adoration unto you, our thankfulness, our praise, and our worship to you, Master. Lord, as we soak in your word this morning, we ask you, Lord, that you would lift our hearts up so that we can bring forth the praise and worship which is acceptable in your sight, Master, in spirit and truth. Asking you to hide me behind your cross, looking unto you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Romans chapter 8 is a fascinating chapter. It expounds so clearly in terms of what the Godhead means to you. The God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune God in reference to you. If you really need to understand what the triune God really means to me or you, yeah, Romans chapter 8. Last time, I don't know how much you remember, we talked about Jesus paying it all for us. For there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. No condemnation. No more condemnation. We have looked at three different aspects. Man's greatest debt. A debt that man can never ever repay. And the second thing that we looked at is the father's greatest act. He did not keep quiet. He ventured out. He sent his son. And thirdly, we looked at son's greatest payment. He paid with his own life on the cross of Calvary. And today, I'm going to throw a few titles. You can appropriate whichever title means to you to uplift your hearts to worship him this morning in natural continuation to that, the spirit's greatest help. The spirit's greatest help. Or the spirit-filled life. Another title, the supernatural living. The supernatural living. Christian living is essentially a supernatural living. By supernatural, when we think about the word supernatural, what comes to your mind? Yeah? The exorcism, the witchcraft, people turning into ships, right? Or teleporting from here to Sri Lanka or India, right? All these things come to your mind, the crystal balls, out-of-body experiences, reincarnation. By supernatural, we mean that powers are at work in Christian living that are above the natural. What a blessing it is. And all these things that naturally come to our mind when we think about supernatural, in a way, they belittle the, ins uh, the all-sufficiency of God and his son, Jesus Christ, 
And it does not the way God communicates with us. It's an abomination before God. There are empty number of verses from Old Testament which we can refer to. That's not what God is talking about when he is indicating towards supernatural living. Instead, it is very specifically the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives by faith on the basis of Christ's historical death and resurrection. It is not a vague or general work. It is clear and specific and it is rooted in the concrete historical life and death of Lord Jesus Christ who rise from the dead and what did he do before he even went to the cross in John's Gospel chapter 16 he promised something the third person in the triune God the Spirit of God he promised the help and the comfort of the Holy Spirit of God right and he gave the Holy Spirit of God to us and the Spirit of God is with us today and we must get entirely different mindset. The key, words, the key word in the passage that we just read, 4 to <laughs> verse 8, is the mindset. We must get the mindset of the Spirit of God. That is what defines us as Christians. That is what defines us as believers. Let's start right there with what a Christian is and get an overview of the argument that Paul is making in these verses. And let us closely pay attention. There are five things that Paul is, Paul is actually putting forth. Maybe you can find more. And that can form the basis for our worship today. What does it mean to be a Christian? Let us start with verse 9. We haven't read the verse. I'll read the verse, verse 9, in the same passage, in, uh, in the same chapter. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. This is one of the profoundest statements in the New Testament of what a Christian is, of what you are, what I am. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. He does not belong to, we do not belong to Christ if we do not have the spirit of Christ. And we are not Christians if we do not have the spirit of Christ. And in the sentence just before that, he says, you, however, are not in the flesh but in spirit if, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you. The spirit of Christ is called the spirit of God. In fact, it's a beautiful chapter. Dwell on this chapter, chapter 8. Look at the three aspects of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of God and the Spirit of uh, Christ are one Spirit. And if you have this Spirit, and if it dwells in you, then you belong to Christ and you are in the realm or the ruling sphere of God's Spirit. You are not governed by flesh. You are not merely in the human sphere or merely in the natural sphere, but you are in the supernatural sphere. That's what we mean when we say that Christian life is supernatural. God's spirit, the spirit of Christ, lives in us, brings about changes that would never and would never would be made without him so that the Christ Jesus is glorified in what we do. Brothers and sisters, not sure how much we realize this fact that the spirit of God, the third person in the Trinity, the God who created the heavens and earth, the third person in the Trinity, chose to dwell, indwell within our hearts, making our filthy and sinful bodies as the temples of God. Our unworthy and useless, worthless and useless lives as the vessels of honor, vessels that meets master's use. How privileged are we? How grateful should we be as you come to his presence this morning? He has brought unto you from the natural plane to a supernatural plane. He made you a person to be filled with the spirit of God, spirit of Christ. Spirit's greatest help. Let us look at Paul's argument here. 
the train of thought we can see from verse, verse 4 to 8, there are five different steps. The first one will start from start to the end and probably will revise from back to the start and then we'll wrap up. Uh, verse, first part of the verse 4 says, the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. If you have your Bibles, I think I have the verse up there, you can look up the screen. Romans chapter 3 verse 18 says, Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the, love, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. How do you fulfill the requirement of the law? And the scripture Romans say, in Romans 13, 8, it says, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Your practical love towards your Lord God. Love the Lord, your God, with your own heart, with your own soul, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Yeah? And secondly, your practical love towards your neighbor. Supernatural living, dear brothers and sisters. Your practical love towards your neighbor. Who is your closest neighbor? Anyone? Yes, thank you, sister. Your own family members. Where do you stand with respect to your love towards them? It's easy to love when everything is hunky dory. We see we are in the days where brother doesn't look eye for eye with another brother within the same family. The spouses are not in good terms with each other. Parents doesn't love the children as much anymore. And kids doesn't respect or honor or love the parents as much anymore. Practical love towards your neighbor. Supernatural love. Loving them as yourself. Loving your spouse. Loving your family members. Your extended family members. What does it do? It fulfills the law. It fulfills the requirement of the law. The love of God, dear brothers and sisters, Romans chapter 5, verse 5. The love of God is shed abroad, poured out into your hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. We are not natural anymore, we are supernatural because we have access to the bank of love, the sacrificial love. How privileged are we? We often build up the layers of hatred, right? So, yeah, something happens, there is a layer of hatred, something again happens, you won't speak out, You'll be quiet, you'll be very patient from outside, right? There is another layer of hatred, and then there is another layer of hatred, and then there is another layer of hatred, and then the time comes where everything will come out. How do you deal with that? Dear brothers and sisters, this has been a reality check for my, my own self as I've been meditating on these verses. Supernatural love. The first aspect, outpouring of God's love in fulfillment of law, the supernatural law, the bank of sacrificial law. And second part uh, of the same verse, verse 4, Paul says that the way this law is fulfilled in us is that we walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Brothers and sisters, supernatural victory. Indwelling of the spirit of God. Supernatural victory. If you are dealing, struggling with sin in your life, the way to overcome is come back to the spirit of God. People often cannot shake off the sin. They even doubt their own salvations whether they are truly born again or not, come back to the Spirit of God. Trust in Him. Supernatural victory. And thirdly, verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of Spirit. The mind set on Christ and the things of God. Paul explains that this walking is in agreement with the spirit because of a certain spiritual mindset behind it. 
the mindset behind walking according to the spirit is a mindset toward the truth and the value of the things of the spirit for those who live and walk according to the flesh set their minds on or have the mind mindset to love the things of the flesh but those who live and walk according to the spirit set their minds on have the mindset to glorify god dear brothers and sisters philippians chapter 4 verse 8 whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely what if there are any of good report and if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy hang on to those stick to those supernatural love supernatural victory and thirdly the supernatural mind god has given the supernatural mind dear brothers and sisters moving further verse 6 for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace the spirit filled mind uh, mindset produces the spiritual walk that fulfills the law spiritual walk supernatural walk supernatural walk the reason that the mindset of the spirit produces a walk that fulfills the law and the reason that the mindset of the flesh doesn't is that the mindset of the flesh is death and the mindset of the spirit is life and peace the spirit is effective in shaping our mind shaping our walk because our lord jesus christ is alive today he imparts spiritual life he does not just speak he does not just speak laws and rules and tells us what to do and what not to do he brings the law and writes it on our hearts and creates the life that loves the law and delights in it the word of god supernatural work the mindset of the spirit produces a super spiritual work that fulfills the law because the spiritual disposition of mind is a fruit on on the form of the life of god's spirit within us supernatural nextly supernatural obedience verse 7 and 8 I'll read the verses because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god nor indeed can be so then those who are in flesh cannot please god from life of hostility to god to life that is pleasing to him shows why we so desperately need the mindset of the spirit and the life of the spirit and why there is death without it without the spirit and the life of the uh, without the spirit and life of the spirit and the mindset of spirit we are dead because we are hostile to god and cannot submit to his law in other words the root of death is sin rebellion against god the root he is an independent spirit that cares for no god prefers for things other than god it is a spirit that has love affair with self ambition selfish ambition self indulgence selfish living the spirit of me mine and i brothers and sisters how gracious our lord has been that the third person of trinity the spirit of god chose to indwell in our hearts you see the mind that is set on flesh is hostile to god our bondage to hostility and insubordination we cannot submit to the law but in grace he moved us from slavery to uh, and disobedience and hostility to the freedom of life and obedience from darkness to light from death to life from hatred to love 
from lessness to peace. Dear brothers and sisters, supernatural living. From natural beings, he made us supernatural beings. He, made, he filled us with the third person of Trinity, the Spirit of God himself. Let us quickly review and close. Let us look from backwards. Verses 7 and 8 talk about the hostility to God, the mindset of the flesh, the way we are by nature as mere humans, apart from any supernatural help from the Spirit of God, is hostile to God. It does not and cannot submit to God or please God. That is our state. And verse 6, the life of the spirit, the spirit-filled mindset produces a spiritual walk that fulfills the law. Therefore, the mind of the flesh brings death. Hostility to God is suicide of the worst kind. Only the spirit gives life. And the mindset of the spirit is the fruit and the form of that life. Life of the spirit creates the mindset of spirit and shapes the mindset of the spirit we must have the spirit to conquer our bondage and rebellion to God. And thirdly, spiritual mindset. Verse 5, the mindset on Christ and the things of God. Therefore, since the mindset of the spirit is the fruit and shape of the spirit's life, the way God designed for us to walk and live is to have the spiritual mindset, supernatural mind, not a fleshly man, from hostility to life to a spiritual mindset. And next, new walk according to the spirit, indwelling of the spirit. Therefore, because we have this spiritual mindset, we walk that way, we live that way. We do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Our spiritual mindset determines our walk. The power of the Holy Spirit to impart life and to change what we value and treasure and desire, dear brothers and sisters, from hostility to life, to a spiritual mindset, to a new walk according to the Spirit. And finally, fulfillment of the law by the outpouring of God's love, supernatural love. We walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. How grateful we should be to this supernatural life that God has given us. The infilling, indwelling of the Holy Spirit within our own lives. The work of the spirit to get us from inability to submit to God, God's law, unto God, unto the very fulfillment of God's law. So let, brothers and sisters, let us come to him this morning and let us look to him and thank him for this wonderful experience that God has given us through this great gift of salvation. He catapulted us from being the natural beings to supernatural beings. May God bless this word. Thank you, brother. In the same chapter, Romans, if you read first verse and second. Therefore, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the